What's going on, my dudes? It's your boy, Chris Sutos or Chris Thrash. You are watching Slasher Pepper. Get fucking thrashed, son. Enjoy. <laughs> hey, guys, Slasher Pepper, and welcome to another interview. Today, I'm going to be interviewing Chris Sutos. How are you doing? I'm doing awesome, buddy. How are you doing? Thanks for having me. For sure. Welcome on the show. I'm glad to have you on here. Thank you. So uh, my first question was, do you have any upcoming projects? I know you have uh, Thrash TV coming up, which is really exciting. Thank you. Yes. So uh, Thrash TV is going to be the uh, YouTube and Twitch platform that's going to be the subsidiary of the Thrash brand. If you go to my website, www.thrash.ca, you can see my merch lines up there. We got the mosh hats going right here right now. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of merch designs on the up and coming. We've got long sleeves that I'm in the middle of just making rough drafts for. We've got our current um, pre-orders going from now until the end of this week, which is very awesome. Uh, the metal hats already got sold out. We still have a uh, fuck yeah and mosh hats. Uh, we also have a music video coming up on March the 8th, courtesy of my boys in Cryptide. So there's going to be lots of contents. Um, as I mentioned in the public statement, there are some things that are just going to be a bit difficult for me to get around to because unfortunately Toronto is still in lockdown. But uh, the day I release that press statement, I did book something very big with a local brewery and I can't say too much else other than that. So there's a lot of good awesome. things on the horizon. Sounds very promising, man. Yes. Awesome. And um. Yeah, you mostly talk about thrash metal. Like, it's obvious that that is your thing, really. <laughs> yeah. Um, like, if I think of thrash metal, I think of you. <laughs> Thank you. That's the objective. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like if I grab out, like, Fabulous Disaster by Exodus, and I just see that cover, I'm like, Chris could be on that cover. You know what I mean? Man, I was just bumping that on the way home from the doctor's office today, too. That's hilarious. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> That's a good album. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I wanted to know, what are your thoughts on Deathcore? Uh, I mean, contrary to what the Chris Thrash character that a lot of YouTube and the public has seen over the years, I am a fan of music, period. So, yes, shock or thrash metal is my favorite genre of music. Oh, yeah. um, I'm into death metal, black metal, folk metal, fucking whatever, classic rock. I like blues. I'll fuck with some East Coast rap from the early, late 80s, early early 90s so for me personally i am not the biggest core fan or any of its <laughs> subsidiaries but if if that floats someone's boat that's all fine and dandy but if i see some fucking motherfucker with their hoodie pulled up in skinny jeans throwing arms like i'm going to i'm running straight through your fucking chest at a thrash show <laughs> i'm not going to ruin don't worry i won't ruin your death core shows my hot topic scene card is already expired so i'll leave that to the kid <laughs> awesome um yeah, my uh, my personal favorite band is Motorhead. Um, nice. I just love every single album. Uh, but I wanted to know, what's your favorite Motorhead album? Probably Orgasmatron or Iron Fist. Those are the two oh, I yeah. find I'm I'm bumping over and over. Right now that I'm getting back into music, the Iron the Iron Fist riff in particular has just been stuck in my head. So at some point today, I'm going to take out the Ibanez and give it a go. But I would say probably. I would lean a little bit towards more Orgasmatron, but one of those two albums for sure. Yeah, Orgasmatron is more like thrash metal too, almost with like the drum yeah. and shit. So you can see where everything's coming from. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my personal favorite is Overnight Sensation. Did you ever listen nice. to that one? I can't say that I'm as familiar with it right. off the top of my head, but Motorhead's got a huge discography. How many studio releases was it? 20 or 19? It was think, like No, I think like 23. Yeah. Either 23 or 24, but then they also have like the On Parole album, which like was released by some asshole studio, you know? Yeah. So there's, there's, there's so much, there's so much Lemmy and Motorhead out there. Um, I'm just starting my vinyl collection too. I forgot to mention uh, vinyl unboxings are going to be coming to Thrash nice. TV as well. And awesome. I, don't worry, there's going to be some Motorhead and vinyl, vinyl unboxings coming oh, yeah. at some point too. Fucking A. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> For me, Motorhead, sometimes when I'm like, what should I listen to next, you know? And then I'll, I'm like, okay. uh, yeah, let's just listen to Aftershock for the 10th time, you know? <laughs> it's always Motorhead. I, I, lis I listen to music the same way. After uh, after I finished my tour with Warbringer, uh, fall of 2019, I, I was walking around the Montreal 
I think it was, can't remember the name of the airport. So, and I'm just walking around. I was like, man, that motor, that Warbringer, that Warbringer tour was awesome. What am I going to listen to now? More Warbringer. So I'm the exact way consuming music wise. So I get that. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, we tend to go back to the same shit every single time. <laughs> I mean, if it makes you happy, it makes you happy. Right. Exactly. That's what counts. Exactly. <laughs> uh, and then, uh, my channel is mostly focused on metal and horror. So I'm curious, what are some of your favorite horror movies? So the horror movie, right off, okay, right off the top of my bat, there's only been one horror movie that genuinely fucked with me. It was Insidious. I saw it the first night I was staying in residence when I first went off to do my undergrad. And there, that fucking Darth Maul looking villain in Insidious, I swear to God, I saw it in the corner of my res bedroom. And it was like my first night moving out. So I was just like, ah. <laughs> so um, as a kid, that one, I'm trying to think off the top, like Evil Dead, that, that's more horror comedy though. So yeah. I don't want to give it, I don't want to give it the label of like classic horror. Um, really like Nightmare on Elm Street. Freddy, oh, Freddy yeah. Krueger is just a classic villain. That and he just chirps a lot. He reminds me of a hockey player, like someone that's just leaning over the bench talking shit. <laughs> because you know he's going to kill you. And it's just I the delivery, he's just so tongue in cheek with it. I love it. <laughs> yes. Yes. When I it's actually funny because uh you know, thinking of uh, Freddy Krueger and, and the way he acts and stuff just reminds me of the time I had Steve Shetcher Souza on the show. And no he, way. Yeah, and he impersonated Freddy. He was like, I'm coming in. <laughs> and it was just so funny to see him do that, you know? <laughs> That's hilarious. That's an awesome, awesome dude. That oh, was, yeah. I think were, I interviewed him on the Power Trip tour with a yeah. That was, it was hilarious because we walk on, I was filming with a, my new my new uh, full-time videographer and editor brian glazer of glazed media who actually filmed that interview it was hilarious because we get on the tour bus and zets there watching football and it's like that 70s show the door slides open and it's just this haze of weed and like we brought him a quarter yes. ounce anyway, <laughs> and we're and he was like oh thanks man and then i remember he kind of seemed kind of tired and i thought oh geez i hope he i hope he's going to be okay to the interview Cameras rolling, sets up, we're good to go. The guy is just made for show business. I love it. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw one vlog in Holland actually, where I'm from. Um, and and he was like, uh, or no, it was the guy from Testament, like the lead singer. Chuck Billy. Yeah, 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 Chuck yeah, Billy. Yeah. And he was like, uh, like Zed was just vlogging them both, and. <laughs> <laughs> like Chuck comes uh, from behind and like he hugs Zed from behind and he's like uh, they were talking about weed and then Chuck all of a sudden comes behind on his shoulder and he's like if it ain't Dutch it ain't much <laughs> about like weed <laughs> I love that that's hilarious yeah so you're from Holland so like have you met Infidel Amsterdam yet who Infidel Amsterdam the uh, death metal YouTuber I have not I don't I've never even heard of him I would highly recommend uh, for young Chris growing up. That was because people have asked me, who's your favorite YouTuber? And contrary to what me being on that platform, I didn't really have one except for Infidel Amsterdam growing up just because uh, he was the originator. I, I don't want to say originator, but in, in my capacity growing up in the scene, I remember in 2008, his uh, how to do death metal growls. That was the first video I saw. And then he has tons of unboxing, uh, lots of labels work with him. And he even has difficult conversations, like when Mitch Lucker passed away and the entirety of death metal were making fun of his suicide. And he said something about it. He's like, come on, guys, are we really going to shit on some? This is a life that's died. Back in the day, that's just a black t-shirt with another black t-shirt. We put these genres and bait and labels on ourselves. So I um, highly recommend him. And he's from Holland. So who the fuck awesome. knows? Maybe you can sesh with him and like get some video done. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. I'm, I'm gonna have to do my research now. <laughs> yeah, he's an awesome dude. Awesome. Um, and yeah, a few. Then here are some kind of philosophical questions, I guess. Um, Go for it. If you could change one characteristic about yourself, what would you change? Time travel. No, one characteristic oh. about yourself. Oh damn! One characteristic about myself. <laughs> <sighs> like an inch or two taller maybe so I could see over a couple more heads at a show that's <laughs> but I sit comfortably in plane so I don't want to give up that luxury either so it's a bit of a give and take right <laughs> I'd probably okay so my my right foot is an inch shorter than my left foot so buying shoes is a pain in the ass because sometimes I'm 10 sometimes I'm 10 and a half so okay we'll save the inch from from height and put it towards my feet just so one of them's even again 
Right. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> uh, and then if you ruled the world, what would the world look like? No karate in the pit, number one. Uh, can cannabis currency, because by that time, my farm would be up and running and I'd be the wealthiest man in the land. Um, <laughs> what, what else would I have? Musicians would have rights because that's something that drives me fucking AWOL about the North American music industry. There has been so much advantageous progress with different industries, be it uh, the sex industry, be it whatever. But musicians, I remember as a kid thinking, oh, man, I want to be a full time musician. Little did I know you have no fucking rights. You're going by what the doorman's paying you out. The venue owner's probably not giving you a cut of the bar tab either. It's it's horrendous. And musicians give up so much, not only time, but the financial wherewithal. So instituting a lot of rights for musicians, uh, I would kick Jeff Bezos in the nut sack. I kicked Zuckerberg in the Zuckerberg isn't even a human being. He's a fucking lizard person. Don't even get me started on him. <laughs> um, I would release all the confidential stuff from Area 51 because we have already made contact with a galaxy. So I would make peace with the intergalactic beings that have already come to Earth. And I'd offer them thrash as a peace treaty. So we'd be in outer space by now. Don't you watch. If I was in charge, things would be so much better. Yeah. Aliens running around with mosh hats. Ideally. Like, we're going to have to make the hats a bit bigger because their craniums are a lot, yes. are a lot bigger than ours. But we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. For sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then here are some uh, choices. So I have two bands you can choose between. Uh, first up, Motorhead or Metallica? Motorhead. Why? Better discography altogether, as much as I love Metallica, and they were my first favorite band of all time, and the, and ultimately Cliff got me into playing bass, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to go back to Motorhead's discography. Metallica, I'm really visiting the first four to five albums. That's it. Right. You know, I can give kudos to Black Album, Load, Reload, even a few tracks on Death Magnetic, but when Hardwired dot, dot, dot to self-destruct came out, I just, I, I, did, I did not do a thing for me. For me, Death Magnetic felt like a return to form, and especially because I was in grade 10 when that album came out. That was 2008 or 9. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, that album meant so much to me. And they don't, Metallica never takes out real metal bands anymore. Like, I don't, I don't understand why Anthrax and Death Angel aren't opening for them when they do their yeah. fucking, <laughs> yet they're taking out Volbeat and Avenge Sevenfold. And fuck me. <laughs> I've seen Metallica four times, twice Volbeat opened up for them. And like, no, save me your shitty Johnny Cash. I can go down the street to the pub and watch that. Like, fuck off, Volbeat. <laughs> still Rob Caggiano, and I'm still mad about that. Yeah, I think uh, at some point, like Zed actually uh, called out on them for like not giving um, the other Bay Area thrash metal bands uh, oh, an opening act. Absolutely. And look, Testament Exodus, another perfect combo. Fuck, Chuck Billy manages both those bands. You could save overhead by booking them through just I'm already making I'm already making these big account moves. Fuck you, Lars, pay me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah, another another interesting point uh thing to point out is uh when I interviewed uh Alex Story. Do you know him by any means? Um who? Alex Story. He's the singer for Cancer Slug. <laughs> Cancer Slug, I can't say I've heard of them. No, that's an awesome name, though. Yeah, it's it's a hardcore punk band, so it's not really metal either. But the mm -hmm. guy um, also chose for Motorhead, and he was like, even the Metallica guys would vote for Motorhead. And I was oh. like, that's so true. <laughs> it is true. You look at Headfield in the 90s. That's a straight Lemmy ripoff, if I've yeah. ever seen one. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> with, <laughs> you even had, like, the hat and, <laughs> you know. The, yeah, with the uh, fucking uh, mutton chops and everything. The, yes. Dude, the fucking... The bullet belt. Let me make bullet belt cool before yep. um fucking Max Cavalera glued yeah. batteries to his belt. So yeah, if you let look me, at let me start it at all. <laughs> if you look yeah. at the Orgasmatron era, you can see them all wearing like white sneakers, black jeans, and bullet belts and all that sort of stuff. So they they were the creme de la creme, man. There's not going to be another motorhead in this lifetime. Never, never. Okay. <laughs> um then cannibal corpse or death. I would be remiss if I didn't say Cannibal Corpse because Corpse Grinder is arguably one of the most entertaining live performers you'll see. I hold him in the highest echelon along with Devin Townsend. They just have the best stage banter. And Corpse Grinder is hilarious because he 
he'll anyone that starts chanting fuck the alliance he'll egg them on a little bit and he, he just calls people out for not moshing too he'll say shit like get your nutsack out of your girlfriend's purse and off her waist and get in the pit like i love zed did that too actually um and now i'm getting sidetracked but yes between death and corpse i'd have to say corpse awesome <laughs> yeah. yeah it's funny because alex story is friends with uh corpse grinder i think mm-hmm. so you know nice. that's the reason for you to check it out <laughs> oh yeah slug. i will then cancer slug uh alice cooper or ozzy osborne alice cooper yeah i dude for i my yeah my i i love don't get me wrong i love the oz but for young chris especially i remember getting welcome to my nightmare in my uh Oh, yeah. My optometrist actually was from Windsor, Ontario, and he shared a story with me. He was a um, part of his, um, I, I can't remember, the class council, student government. And the student government was trying to book a band for this dance. And there was this guy, Alice Cooper, in the newspaper, and the school didn't want to hire him because he cost too much or something. But like just having that story as a kid just cemented that, wow, Cooper came from fucking dick all. Like he was playing high school theaters and everything and granted i love ozzy i love black sabbath i love his solo stuff i love the fact that ozzy's got the greatest eye for talented guitarists something about alice cooper man and cooper still does it he's yeah. been he's been sober for a very long time i dude i was just watching one of his old live shows and you're you, i've seen cooper three or four times now twice with maiden and i think once with priest and you you never get tired of him chopping his own head off on stage. oh yeah <laughs> that's fucking sick <laughs> it is yeah i yeah. saw him live once and it's funny because this is the first time someone chooses alice cooper over ozzy but i would choose alice as well so that's really cool to finally hear. yeah um, <laughs> yeah then the final uh question metallica or exodus exodus hell yeah dude the first time okay so here's connecting back to earlier so the first time i saw exodus was at the phoenix in 2015 on the Dark Roots of Thrash Tour, Testament were the headliners. Shocker, booked by the same manager. Metallica figured the fuck out. So I'm sit, I'm, and I'm waiting to go in. I'm standing with a friend of mine, and I'm in my, and I'm in my Exodus shirt. I've got my Exodus CD in my camo pants pocket, and Zet is walking up the street with his luggage. He sees me, points at me, and then runs across the street. And I'm like, what the fuck? The lead singer of Exodus is coming up to me. And he goes, hey, what's going on, man? You have any weed? And like, that was the one time I showed up to a venue early without weed. And since that day, you will not find me at a venue without a quarter ounce of grass in my shoe and a few joints already rolled. <laughs> but he was so awesome because like, I was like, I'm so sorry. And then I took my CD out and he signed it anyway. And we shot the shit a little bit. And as he's signing the CD, he looked at me because I, I was saying to him, I was like, yeah, man, I can't wait to mosh. He was like, yeah, you going in the pit tonight? I was like, yeah, dude. He's like, get ready. You're going to kick your fucking face in and knock you, knock your ass out. And that was the first time someone am the front man of a show. And I don't care how old anyone is. You have that right attitude. And Zet's got that fucking attitude, man. So Exodus till I fucking die, dude. Awesome. Yeah, I would probably agree. <laughs> yeah. Well, then then one more random question, uh, I guess. Um, is ex What Exodus album is your favorite? Okay. So here's the thing. Bonded by Blood is the attitude, the aesthetic, yeah. what thrash is about, the stick it to the man, stick it to the posers. Contrary to popular belief, Pleasures of the Flesh is my favorite Exodus album for this reason. You have the writing of Bailoff, you've got the writing of Zet, you've got the writing of the rest of the classic era, but it's Zet on vocals. And I love Bailoff. May he rest in paradise. He is the creme de la creme of fuck you, I'm going to punch your teeth in. But Zed is the voice of Exodus. And I love Dukes. I love all eras of Exodus. But Zed, yeah. Zed is Exodus. So for my I money, agree. it's Pleasures of the Flesh. Fucking A. Yeah, dude. Man, I, I, there's something about... Uh, I got to re-listen to all of the albums, honestly. It's been quite a while. But the one I have I have been listening to um, for some time is uh, um, Tempo of the Damned. I love that album. That, and Dude, that's such a... Reg oh, and talking about Return to Form albums, 2004 was oh, a yeah. big year for thrash metal. Because um, not only did Temple of the Dan came out, Death Angel dropped their 2004 release. I know the album cover, it's red, it's got this thing on the front anyway. But yeah, Temple of the Damned fucking slaps. And they still play yeah. Blacklist. And fucking oh, yeah. all. I miss deadlifting to Blacklist, man. That song just gets me right amped. 
oh, what's the other song um man i gotta look this one up because it's it's such a good song it's like i think that's my favorite of uh of the album mm-hmm. man what's <laughs> hold on i'll help you out, out a bit i'm gonna look up the track listings i know there's so much music throwing down list. throw it down no throwing, throwing down, down. Yes. Yes, that song fucking slaps. War is my shepherd. I fucking shroud yes. of Europe. This is when we get into like tongue in. That's something I, I also love about Zep. The tongue in cheek lyricism that he has in his writing. He's so eloquent and just he's timeless. Because yeah. one day I'm going to pick. I'm going to give an ex of the CD to my kid and and tell him, hey man, you know, go go have fun with the fabulous disaster and bounce off the walls and you know be you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I love the part in Throwing Down where it's like, uh, feed me to blame like it's my fault. <laughs> like the way he screams that part is so cool. Yeah, I love His it. His delivery is fucking excellent, bar yeah. none. <laughs> so is there anything you would like to add to the interview? Yes. Thank you to all of you motherfuckers who have been on this journey and continue to be on this journey. If you want to take a look at the website, www.thrash.ca, follow us on all of our socials. Everything is linked on that website. Um, give thrash tv a subscribe we got brand new video coming out monday with riptide their brand oh, new yeah. music video there's a lot of goodies on the way a lot of giveaways coming up too but roger thank you so much for your time and i can't wait to see this for sure and all the links uh, to the social media and the website will be in the description just to make it easier for everybody <laughs> dope happy to hear thank you so much again man you're welcome and to everybody watching we'll see you guys next time see ya Alright, oh if you start to be today the light You again, you again I know you come and lay the tan Listen up, listen up